What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson. And today, I'm gonna show you how I made this beautiful, smoky, sausagey, buttery beef sausage Wellingtons. Coming up! Christmas time is upon us, folks. Time to bust out another turkey, a prime rib, or of course, the classic beef Wellington. But this year I wanted to do something a little bit different, which got me thinking, I wonder if I could make a beef sausage Wellington. Kind of like a kolache, but with all the flavors from the original dish. So that's what we're gonna make today, and if everything goes according to plan, it is going to be delicious. a whole video on how to make beef sausage and we are going to stick pretty close to that recipe. What I've got here is a point half of a brisket and a fatty cut will work well here. A chuck roast would probably do just fine. If you were going to separate your meat and fat, you'd be looking for something like a 70-30% meat to fat ratio. But I've had good luck just using the point half of a brisket if you can find it. Because as you can see, there's a lot of fat on there. If you want to get more detail on how and why I do all the things, beef sausage related. You can check out the beef sausage video, but for now I'm going to breeze right through it. Just going to send this brisket right on through the old meat grinder here. We're using the coarse dye per usual, and this is five pounds of meat and fat total. And as always, I had this in the freezer for an hour or so just to firm it up, which will help with the cutting process and the grinding. To season this batch of beef sausage, we're gonna go in with kosher salt, some pink salt, garlic powder, mustard powder, some black pepper, fresh thyme, and some freshly chopped rosemary for those wonderful Christmas flavors. Then we're gonna go in with some milk powder for our binder. Get that all mixed up, and on to the meat it goes. Also gonna go in with our liquid component, which is going to be some beef bone broth. Just gonna mix this all together in a bigger bowl. Oh yeah, get in there with your hands. And I'll have exact ingredient amounts and all that good stuff in the description of the video. And then through the grinder one more time. Mm, smells like sausage. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Going with the standard hog casings today. Got these soaking in some warm water. Flushed all the salt out of them. All that good stuff. I was like to send a little bit of water through the casing too to flush out the inside. Oh, Mr. Tin Man. Merry Christmas to you too, sir. In the happy new year, tie it off and get to stuffing. You can make these whatever size you like, however long you want your Wiener Wellington to be. Mm -hmm. I always forget to bring a knife to the Wiener party. Look at that, a whole five pound batch without popping or single casing. It's gonna be a good year. So there we have it. Got all of our links ready to go onto the smoker. There's a snake in my boot. Nice and toasty. One big dense log. Ought to be just the thing. We're gonna be cooking these links right at 150 degrees, which is gonna cook them real slowly and make sure they get lots of smoke on them. But at that temperature, they are also in the danger zone where bacteria likes to grow. So that's why we put the pink salt in there as well. Look at that, a couple of these popped after the fact. Weird, never seen that before. When I'm putting these on, I'm gonna try and stretch them out a little bit so they're a little bit straighter instead of curly, which will make life easier down the road when it comes time to roll these up. Usually I don't hug them this tight together because we want smoke to get on all sides, but again, trying to make them so they're nice and straight. So that being said, we're gonna let these cook for the next few hours, get some really nice color on them, get those casings dried out a little bit, and we'll check back in. 
While we wait for our sausage to cook, we have got plenty of time on our hands to whip up the next ingredient we're gonna need, which is going to be a duck cell. If you're unfamiliar with a duck cell, it's essentially a mushroom paste that acts as a barrier between the meat and the puff pastry. Once we've got our shallots, our thyme, and our garlic all prepped, it's time to focus on the mushrooms. Into the food processor, I'm gonna go in with one pound of brown baby bella mushrooms, cremini mushrooms. You can pretty much use whatever you like, or a mixture. We're just gonna pulse this until it is nice and finely chopped. Beautiful. On to the flat top, I'm gonna to go down with just a little drizz of some nice olive oil and maybe a little dash of some white truffle oil, just to be fancy. And then we're going on with our shallots. We're just gonna gently cook these, not trying to get too much color on them, just soften them up a bit. That's looking pretty good to me. Now we're gonna go in with our mushrooms. I may have gone a little overboard on the blitzing on these, but we'll find out together. Basically what we're trying to do here is just cook out all the moisture from these mushrooms. Moisture is the real enemy when making any kind of Wellington because steam will destroy your puff pastry. It needs to be crisp and light and buttery. So to help with some water extraction as well as seasoning, we'll go in with a nice healthy pinch of salt and some black pepper. We're just gonna keep cooking this down until it is water free and looking real nice. After about 10 minutes or so, you should have gotten rid of most of your moisture and it should look something like this. This is when you can go in and add a little extra flavor in the form of some wine, some brandy, cognac, whatever booze you got floating around for a little extra flavor. That's a nice little glug. Help deglaze the pan a little bit. Alcohol will burn off and you'll just have one more layer of flavor. We're also gonna go in with a little knob of butter just to help everything come together, get a little extra creamy. Once you get to this stage, nearing the end, that's when you wanna go in with some chopped garlic, some fresh thyme. Once the garlic's kinda lost its raw edge a bit, then we can take it off, set it aside, let it cool down, and then check back in on the sausage. After three and a half hours at 150, I bumped it up to 300 for the last 30, 45 minutes until these sausages are feeling nice and plump. So, let's see how they look. Very hot. Oh gosh. And I'm dunking them right into an ice bath here. Very nice red color, nice and plump. These are some thick boys. And I'm going right into a water bath to stop the cooking. Oh, oh damn it. I'm going right into a water bath here to stop the cooking process, shrink up the skins, and it also helps clean them off because everybody loves a clean weenie. There's a look at the one that I just dropped on the ground. Looks pretty good, nice and juicy. Your lucky day, Pee Pee. He's a lucky dog. Beep, 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 beep. Nice and plump. Plump weans, cleaned, cooled, out of the smoker, ready to eat. Beautiful, thin prosciutto. Duck cell, cooled, ready to go. Assembly of the Wiener Wellington. Using your wiener as a guide, we're gonna shingle down some prosciutto. Just as wide as it needs to be. That's looking good to me. Nice, thin layer. Enough that will wrap all the way around your sausage. Mmm, smoky. I find it easiest just to slap on a pair of gloves and kind of spread this out like the little mushroom pate it wants to be. Now we wrap it up. You just want to keep this roll nice and tight. Beautiful. I'm gonna wrap this up, twist the ends, and do it again. And I'm gonna pop this and the other one into the fridge for a little bit to firm up, cool down, all that stuff. Not really necessary, but might as well while I roll up the rest. Bam! Let's talk about puff pastry, folks. This is your classic store-bought puff pastry. I do not ever intend on making my own. Well, maybe one day. But this is how it comes out of the freezer. I pulled it out about 30, 40 minutes ago to make sure it defrosted and thawed enough to be pliable. So we're simply just gonna roll this out to about an eighth of an inch or so. Ooh, very nice. Wrap this up, full coverage. Then we're gonna paint this little end here with some egg wash. This is four egg yolks with two tablespoons of water. Just gonna help everything stick. Pinch the ends together, and there we go. Nice and plump. Looks like a banana. I was thinking about trying this with roast beef instead of prosciutto to keep the beef vibes going, but I didn't. So if anyone does, hit me up, let me know. At this point, I'm gonna wrap these in plastic just to make sure the shape on them is nice and tight, nice and plump. And I'm gonna stick these in the freezer until we're ready to throw them on the 
hit because we want that puff pastry to be as cold as possible. That way the butter kind of steams and everything puffs. One final optional step in the Wellington game is adding a nice lattice pattern on top. If you're not on YouTube or Instagram, then you probably don't have to do this, but it sure does look nice. This is a lattice roller and it's just a bunch of wheels with little notches in them. So when you send it through this, it cuts a beautiful little pattern. And then if everything goes according to plan, you can stretch all these out into a wonderful diamond shape. You know what? To be honest, I could never figure out how to make these things work. This is why I don't bake. Well, the idea here is if you do get one that looks halfway decent, you wanna brush your whole log with that egg wash from earlier, cover the whole shaft, Go right on top of that, trimming off any excess. One final coating of egg wash on top of the lattice, followed by a generous pinch of some flaky salt. And there we have it, the sausage Wellington. Mm. All right, I got all these Wellingtons wrapped up. I went with the lattice powder on these three and just went with a straight up little edge of the knife on this one. Crunchy salt on top of all. Now we're going on to a 450 degree smoker. Woohoo! 45 minutes later, these Wiener Wellingtons are done. Nice and golden brown. You know the sausage is cooked. We're gonna let these rest for a good little bit and then we're gonna slice in. While these Wellingtons were cooking, I decided to whip up a little bit of a au jus, if you will, where I took some beef bone broth and I just reduced it down. This is the same broth that I used in the sausage itself. And now that it is nice and thickened, I'm gonna throw in a couple of knobs of cold butter. I'm gonna whisk these together until it makes a wonderful little pan sauce. Ooh. Yes, please. Thick and rich. When I pulled these off the pit, they were rocking a solid 200 degrees internal, which is a really great thing because instead of having to worry about the internal temperature of a tenderloin, we just need to make sure the outer crust is brown and delicious. That being said, I let these cool for quite a while and now I think it's time to cut in and see the fruits of our labor. Oh, that's a beautiful sight. I gotta say, Carl, I'm pretty pleased with the way that looks. Nice and golden brown, nice and smoky. This is the new Yule log. Okay. But here's the best part, Carl. A little drizz. Uh, a little bit. Come on. Would you like to try the world's first beef sausage Wellington? Yeah. Like, oh, we've never had Wellington? Mm-mm. Uh, oh, wow. I have lived a sheltered life. That's garlicky. Mm-hmm. But good. I mean, honestly, can you have too much garlic? No. <laughs> mm. One time I had too much garlic. Now he's got three kids. I know. <laughs> what is a Wellington? When, what am I eating? So, a Wellington is traditionally a beef tenderloin wrapped in a mushroom duxelle, which is like a mushroom pate, wrapped in puff pastry, which is essentially butter with as little flour needed to make it into a dough. Sliced up, served with a nice au jus, but this time we took a little little detour and added some sausage instead of the tenderloin. Tenderloin, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, that was fantastic. And you know what I'm gonna do right here? Can I have a tip? Mm. <laughs> I, I want just... Is there a difference in these? No. Nope. Okay. Just my decorating skills. I ran out of uh, lattice skills to do uh, this one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Oh boy, it pays to be neighbors. Oh, that crust. That'll put you in a good place. La, 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 la. I like that it still retained that snap. Yeah, I was actually surprised about that. The uh, the snap of the sausage mm -hmm. comes through. Delish. Dude, that is you, though. That, that was a salty, jouy. garlicky, deliciousy, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You gotta knock on the bottom like a loaf of bread. <laughs> Is that how you pick it out from the supermarket? Mm-hmm. Now, Brooke, <laughs> if I pull this out... Oh, I hate that. <laughs> how does this make you feel? I kind of like it. That's a perfect little nugget just to fill up with the au jus and just get real creepy <laughs> oh, with it. Oh, it's like au jus It's a creepy bucket. And... Whoa. And heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> well, that takes care of that pesky neighbor, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's probably a little little much. That's rich. You don't say. Pee -pee, that Pee -pee's is rich. Gunning. Ow! <laughs> I can't stop. And I won't stop. A little dip dip in the. That is ridiculous. 
Mm. Mm. Merry Christmas, y'all. I like Christmas. Happy New Year's. Or whatever holiday. Well, that's not coming up so quite mind. yet. But yeah. Here's here's to your holidays, your Wellington. Wellington's Fieldsville, Iowa. Nailed it. <laughs> Love y'all. Cheers. Cheers. All right, one more. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is my version of how to make beef sausage Wellington. I would call that a very delicious, successful experiment that I would highly recommend giving a try. Especially if you bypass the whole sausage making thing. This whole recipe comes together real quick and makes a wonderful addition to any holiday meal. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button. Help the channel grow, helps me out a lot. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at ChudsBBQ. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Leave me a comment down below to let me know what you want to see me cook next. Head over to ChudsBBQ.com for all pit inquiries, wait lists, tortilla presses, and all that good stuff. If anyone personally knows Gordon Ramsay, send him a link to this video. I want to know what he has to say. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!